will be opened in even in this short little devotional. And so, Lord, we do seek you in this, that as we open your word to read it, that Holy Spirit, you would be opening our eyes, that you would be opening our responses to you. I pray, Lord, that we would be encouraged as well as challenged through your word today. I pray that it as short as a, a study as this is, Lord, um, that it will extend and it will grow in our hearts and minds and, and in our actions, Lord, that it will continue, your word will continue to work in us. And we pray that you would be glorified in all of this. In your name, Jesus, amen. amen. So last night we were exploring the fifth listed result of justification in Romans chapter 5, and in those first 11 verses, there are six, at least six results that stem out of this justification, and I keep saying it, justification means being placed in a righteous position before God. That's not something we do on our own. We, we can't attain that within ourselves. That comes through Jesus's work on the cross, and by the way, Romans 5 verse 9 really covers that point well. The result that we looked at last night was assurance, confidence, and, and this assurance being, concerning our salvation in Christ, that we can have an assurance, a confidence in that. Not a self-confidence, but a confidence and assurance that is built on who God is and what He has done and is still doing in us. And I, I mentioned last night that really that's been building through all of the results of justification. If you look back to towards the beginning, we, we looked at how uh, there's this hope of glory. Well, that hope of glory, that, that something that is still ahead, that resurrection glory of Christ, we're filled with hope. We're filled with confidence because of that. And then just last week, we were looking at God's love, that the Holy Spirit pours God's love into our hearts. How amazing that is when we realize that's a demonstration of, of who God is and that he wants us to have this affirmation knowing, I love you. And when we know that God loves us, that builds our confidence, again, not in self, but in Him and in all the many things that He has given us. And so we've been watching this confidence, this assurance, build and build, and then it climaxed last night in verses 9 and 10 of Romans 5. The Lord wants, the Lord desires for us to live in that confidence, in that assurance, because of the effect that it has in our relationship with Him. Because when we have an assurance in our salvation in the Lord, then we begin to realize there are other assurances that we're able to walk with through life. And one of them, just one other assurance that's so key to all of this, is prayer. Assurance in our prayers to God. And so we're going to watch that unfold by moving over to 1 John chapter 5. So if you've got your Bibles or your phones or your pads or whatever, 1 John chapter 5, we're going to look really at verses 13 through 15. And what is very striking about 1 John 5 verse 13 is that it connects with the same theme of assurance for salvation. Check this out. Verse 13 says, John writes, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. You see how this segues right in. We, we see this same theme once again, that we can know that we have eternal life. That's important to God for His people who've placed faith in Him, who have received the Son of God, Jesus, to know that they have eternal life in him to know this and if you look further up verses 11 and 12 of 1 John 5 it talks about just as clear as can be it talks about who those are that can know and it's those who receive the testimony of God about his son Jesus Christ 
If you have the Son, you have life. If you do not have the Son of God, you do not have life. That's the gospel packed in right in those verses. But John was writing this to the church, saying, I'm writing these things because you believe in the name of, of Jesus to know that you have this eternal life. This is the same assurance that we were looking at last night in Romans chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. But now watch how interesting it is as we move into verses 14 and 15, still carrying the idea of assurance and certainty, but look at where it goes. Verse 14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. This approaching God, this is, this is the idea of coming before God's throne, coming before him in prayer. Last night, we spent a little bit of time looking at Jesus as our great high priest. By the way, that is the way that we can approach God. It's, it's through Jesus, our mediator, through Jesus, the great high priest. But then there's this confidence, this great assurance that what we ask of him, he hears. He hears us. Now, I realize that sometimes we will pray about something and it doesn't seem that God hears because what we've been praying about, it doesn't seem to change or do anything at all. And sometimes that can begin to weaken our confidence in going before God's throne and going and, and praying to him. And I want to challenge us with that this morning because there are just a, a few words in verse 14 that really stand out. I'm going to read that part again. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we just gloss over according to his will and just move on and say, but this is what I have for you to do, God. Here's my agenda for you. Then we're going to we're going to find a lot of disappointment in prayers. We're going to feel like we're not being heard. The commentator William Barclay wrote this. He says, We are so apt to think that prayer is asking God for what we want, whereas true prayer is asking God for what He wants. Amen. When we can come to that place and recognize that talking to God and seeking Him is about seeking His will and not ours, it changes, it totally changes the way in which we pray and the, and, and the things that we are praying about. Do you realize, though, that that can be a difficult thing? Because we're still people with wants. Mm -hmm. Wanting it our way, in our timing, to be exactly within our will. The truth is, and, and this, is, this is an encouragement part, God's will, do you know how scripture defines God's will? Good, pleasing, and perfect. Mm -hmm. That's Romans 12, verse 2, that God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. The hang-up can be when we think that our will is better than God's will. I, I can think back through my life, and things that I asked my parents for, you know, and they didn't always say yes. Dad, Mom, can I have another Mountain Dew, please? No. You've already had six of them. I think you're done. I need another one. I said please. Come on, let's do this, right? I mean, and that's just, that's like small potatoes, but, but there are things that, that we will ask of other people. And it's interesting after a period of time to look back in hindsight and see the things that I've asked for in my life from my parents or from other people and realize that when they said no, it was like a really good thing. That was a good answer. I didn't like the answer at the time, but in hindsight, I can see how good it was. <laughs> Listen, how much more with God who has a good, pleasing, and perfect will that when we go before him and we make our prayers, that, that the more we can attach to, God, what is your will in this? You, you tell me, God. Like, what, 
What, what do I need to do? What do I need to be praying about? Have you ever reached a point where you say, then I don't even know how to pray? Because God, it's your will, and sometimes my will isn't your will, and I don't even know what to pray. I don't even know how to, how to handle this. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried to pray and you just couldn't? Mm-hmm. Check this out. This is, I believe this is going to be very helpful. Romans 8, verses 26 and 27. Here is your greatest prayer partner ever. <laughs> It's Holy Spirit. It says this, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. I like that. Wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. You know what's incredible about this is that just as much as our assurance in salvation depends on God, it is the same with our prayers. The assurance that we have in making our prayers before God also depend on God. We are so dependent on Holy Spirit in our prayers. Holy Spirit, you guide me in this. You give me those wordless groans that I don't even know how to say what I'm trying to say, but you bring it before the Father. You bring it before the throne because whatever you bring before the throne, I can be certain, I can know it is the will of God. That's what verse 27 tells us in Romans uh, 8. I want to read that part again. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with, with the will of God. Again, we depend on Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us in this prayer, in in the prayers that we make. And as we do, there is this great assurance. How awesome that God desires for His children to have assurance in salvation, to have an assurance in prayer. Because when we're sure and certain in those things, there's a whole new boldness that we're able to walk through life with. And again, it's not a boldness that's built on self-confidence. It's a boldness that is built on how great our God is, how faithful our God is, how good He is, how true to His promises He will always be. Do you want that kind of confidence? That kind of assurance? That you can walk through each and every day boldly, not in yourself, but in the Lord. Guess what? In order to have that kind of assurance, we need to realize our weakness and depend completely on God's strength, on God's power in, in everything. We've got to become weak in order to truly experience the boldness and confidence that we need to walk through this life with the Lord. And so, Lord, I, I, I ask, I pray, as I'm talking to you about praying, Lord, I, I, just, I ask that for each one of us here, Lord, that we would have a, a, a uh, renewed or maybe a new confidence in you. That, Lord, in everything we do, as we think about our, our salvation, and sometimes even with, with the idea, like, maybe I've lost it. Maybe I'm not good enough. Lord, help us to rethink that. Help us to always center on you, Jesus. It, it, it's your strength. It's because of you that we can be saved. That's, that's why we can have the assurance of it. Lord, may that also echo into our prayer life. That it would not be about us. It would not even be about the things we're asking, Lord. But that we would be depending on you that you would be opening up our hearts, that as we know you more, we would begin to pray within your will. Because as we pray in your will, there will never be a disappointment in any of the things that we are praying because we know with a great assurance that you are acting on those very things. Lord, help us. Draw us in closer and closer to you. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope.